Okay, hello, and welcome back everyone. Today I'm Kevin from Kevin Walker MC. Today I have this guy, which is a Fujika ST801 with this Fujinon W lens. This guy fixed on my own, the Fujika, without videotaping it for you guys, yeah, but this Fujika lens, the Fujika W, I'm going to fix right now in front of you. So, where's the camera I actually gonna see? This is gonna be the stuff in the edge of the table. Wait, let's pull this thing slightly up, yeah? Okay, hopefully this will work. Okay, and it's gonna drip down by itself and it's gonna end up somewhere here. So this is the Fujika. This thing is an M42 mount with a locking bit, which is quite odd, yeah? For you guys that are not used to it, but there is this locking thing right here. And then you screw the lens out. So it has this lock. And then the lens has also this like pin right here, yeah? So, Usually you have like this, only this small ring over here, M42, thread mount, and then you do not have this pin, and you also do not have this thing usually. If you want to put this thing on digital, you have to like remove this pin by grinding it away, or just grinding your adapter, yeah, I know that has like a groove. On these things, they have like a small groove, yeah, so this thing will fit outside of this groove right here, and they'll fit in. Now what's wrong with this guy is it has fungi and also has some aperture problems, where it does not move the aperture at all. Okay. So yeah, um, this Nikon Z6 is not like the uh, what you call this thing, Sony A6400 where you can actually see the screen. Yeah, this thing's still fully up, but I cannot see the screen at all. I'm filming the tail on the Yashica TSP 28mm f2.8. So let's see how it works. Let's try opening my hands. That works. Also, I'm in a Zoom class right now. Yeah, so. Because teachers think we are like primitive apes that can't use these like software aids. I can actually do this. Well, yeah, on this Zoom lesson, piece of shit. Let's see where this thing is now. Infinity goes up here. So, this yellow thing is on the bottom. This yellow glue stuff. I'm gonna also mark the top with. Most people use like this search for this thing. Um, the tool to like scratch a line on that thing, but I would. I'm gonna use the screwdriver that I have. And nail polish. So nail polish will go with acetone, yeah? And that's how you can do this without destroying anything. So, you wanna open this guy up. Then take some of this nail polish on your screwdriver. And then mark the infinity part with there you go. Then this stuff you can put your pants, or if you do not want your pants to be white, if they're like grey like mine right now, yeah, I think you can see them. Um, just do this, wipe them off with tissue, and then now you have a clean screwdriver bit. Next thing you want to do is you want to remove these screws. Um, I would recommend opening the, the silver ones up first, because <coughs> they seem like they hold the front filter in. And then we're gonna go under the front ones after you can see what is in there. So this seems like a pH 1 or pH 0. This seems like pH 0, I think. So let's open this guy up. This thing is the Xiaomi Media 24 bit set. I think that's 24 bit, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, 24 bit. Okay. So this thing is magnetic. Good to know, yeah. Let's go over there. Number two, this is number three. Three has this like glue stuff, so it's not in there anymore. Yeah, so it's, that's why I mark this thing with some white paint to like make sure everything does not fall apart or like just essentially not be in order. Now, this you can see the focusing ring over there. Yeah, so wait, let's push this over here. Focusing ring has three screws on the outside, like here one, two, and three, and then these are like. Things that I think hold the optical block in. Let's try opening the optical block. So, this. Then you have this. And I think this thing should just fall off. Let's see.
Um, sometimes these things can be a bit sticky, yeah. so let's try my suction cup if I can. Yeah. Well, this thing is a bit bulbous for element, so you might not be able to suck it up. Let's try this. Yeah, see it's just fallen out. So the whole optical group is in here. Nice. Um, but there is, oh this is the front group. And the back is also bulbous, so it, you cannot set it on the table like that. Yeah. And then the front, I mean the rear has also some elements which are not coming out immediately. Okay, nice. Uh, what else do I need? Oh yeah, aperture, yeah. So I might need to delve deeper in this guy. <clears throat> this guy's gonna go sit here. Then, what else can I see? This silver ring seems like it's being hold, I mean, held, which was thing? held in by these three screws. So for this, you want a black marker. You can use, let's just use pen ink. It's got can't be easier. <clears throat> so using this marker you can like mark the top just like that then you can mark I mean then you can remove these three inner screws these things seem like it's your serious screws man and my screwdriver is a bit too big for this so I might want my Mavic mini screwdriver which is this guy gonna pull this guy out ah okay this is also luckily magnetic which is nice I think this will actually help you open the aperture to blade this up this thing has blades in I can see like their pins but they do not move which is not a good sign yeah? but let's see what I can do Seems like nobody's ever been in here before, so this might be my lucky day. Now, why is this thing not coming up? Oh, shit. Maybe we got that glue on the side, yeah, let's see. Let's try cut out the glue. Okay. And this side has some glue also. <clears throat> Let's see if I can like pull this guy out. No? Okay. Seems like this is part of the helicoid. So let's just screw this guy back in. And let's see what I can do. I think we should like open up the focusing ring before we actually try to like do this. So this thing goes in here. goes up here and this goes into the other hole okay so this thing's perfectly on infinity yeah so you want to stop it at infinity and then you also want to put mark on this thing right here uh to put a mark on that thing you want to do what let's see <clears throat> marker would cut I'm gonna use some white paint again I'm going to first scrape away at some of this material on the ring. There you go. <clears throat> then now let's use some white paint and paint the inside of this ring. A simple line should be enough. Just like that, yeah? That's the indicate infinity. This if you're just lazy, yeah? So you can like ballpark it by like screwing the thing when it's straight and then you put it on your body and then you test it for a while and then it should be perfect. Because this thing has a pin, yeah? And having a pin means that you cannot mount this thing on any random M42 adapter without taking the aperture ring out. And I do not want to do that because it's tiring, yeah? And yeah, I'm lazy, so that's what I'm gonna do. 
So this I'm gonna just screw these three and see what happens. So this thing might not be magnetic. Let's see what this thing is. I think it's not magnetic also. Yeah. So the focusing ring screws do not seem very magnetic. Should I paint the inside of this also? So because you must remember where the like thing goes. So you wanna so this into the inside of that bit also. Okay. Let's now turn the sound on for this guy. And close this thing. Okay, nice. Okay. What the heck? Let's keep it off. So then let's pull this ring out. Yeah, when it's disgusting. Okay. Then you see this white blob right here, that is where the infinity should be. Uh yeah, no, what the fuck? So I okay. What I need to do now is I'm gonna have to pull the thing out, this helicoid bit out, so I can actually access the bottom bit over here. Because I've already opened this bottom bit and it still does not work because you can only select pins and not the aperture assembly itself inside of this bottom bit. Like you open this ring and then you only see this ring and one ball that clicks, nothing else. Um, for now I wanna scratch a small line on the surface. That, okay, they should be visible uh, once you wash it. There's not the lines though. Okay, let's put one right beside it, uh, so just for reference. Yeah. Eh. Then this, pull it. Ah, perfect. Okay, now you wanna unscrew this guy. Let's see how many turns you have to hit the bottom. No, I don't know, not sure. Wait, this is gonna be. One, not even one third man is gonna fall. Oh, I think it has some rails. I'm not sure how the rails go in. Cause you have like the. Let's try and like screw this thing back in here. Yeah. Side back to infinity. And then you wanna try opening the side screws, I think. How many minutes am I recording? 17 minutes left. Okay, nice. So, I think what you want to do is you want to open this guy up. The small pin over here is on the infinity stop, so I'm not scared about losing the position here. Just unscrew this guy. Once you unscrew this guy, you want to unscrew this guy. I think it has three of these screws here on the side. So. And also what I found out is that if you have a good Philips, Philips bit, like this me jacket, this thing I think is Philips, they actually work quite well GIS screws, they see on GIS. If you have a rubbish screwdriver then, yeah, you're just out of luck. You can damage your screws and stuff like that. This then should come out, somehow. Should go down, I'm not sure. I think it should go down, so let's try and open this thing from the bottom, yeah. Open this, you wanna open it up with this. Like which was thing? Uh lens spanner. No, it's it's like a compass I think that's what you call it. I'm not sure. Oh no no no, it's it's a vernier caliper. There you go. So how the heck did I get that wrong one? <laughs> okay, so this now once you finish this, you can pull this bottom ring out. Oh shit, the whole thing comes out, man. Holy shit. Okay. So it seems like these three screws are holding the thing in. Okay. Yeah, these three screws are holding the whole thing in. And so I didn't have to open the bottom. Let's put the bottom back in.
let's not close this guy back up. I mean, I'm gonna open this thing and I'm gonna loop this thing yeah, but I'm gonna do it later because it is not the time where I wanna play with this thing yet. So, this should go in. <coughs> That's tight, okay, nice. Now, if you can see this, yeah, it does not move this aperture hand right here. This thing likes to go back, which means that it should close. Or, I mean, it should like closing more than opening. And for some reason, these blades are not opening right now. So, they were like open. Then now they're closed, but they can't open anymore. What the fuck is wrong with these blades? Let's just open the rear most group first, yeah. So, oh, I see. Okay, let's now. So you wanna? <laughs> this is a bit. <laughs> How the heck is this so hard to do? You have to hold this thing in while you open this group out, which is oh, it's glued in. Okay. Because it's glued in. Ah, uh, you wanna put this thing right here, I think. Yeah. Then this optic you might wanna use for your calipers. Or let's see. Yeah, I think you wanna use when you're kind of for that guy. Yeah. Okay. 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 It seems like it's not gonna work because somehow the aperture stuck and. I do not want to hit the aperture with my calipers, so seems like it's going up in a, like a triangle shape, which is not common. I'm not sure what the heck's wrong with them. I think one of these bridges like jumped out, and that is why this is happening. Oh, not opening. Okay, nice. It's oh shit. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to like open it slowly without these things catching. So you're not supposed to close them down this much. So let me show you, yeah. You're supposed to like push them down one by one. And then it's open and open, see? Okay. So one thing you cannot do is you cannot open this thing. I mean close this thing down too much. Nice. Lesson learned. Now what else can I do with this guy? So first what I wanna do is I wanna take the thing out of the healing coin. Which is gonna mean I think I'm gonna have to open these two screws, but for that I'm gonna go screw this thing down first, so that I can actually mark the position. But I think I, cause I haven't marked the position, then I cannot do it anymore right now. But let's see. So let's align these two together. Okay. And I think this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. So you wanna like mark this, mark this. And then you want to mark, where's the other line? This, and this. Okay, there you go. Next you can just probably, okay, I think it's not gonna go in because you're probably more supposed to like, push it out from the top, but it's not supposed to have these things out. So you want to like remove the, The guide pins. Shit, my legs so fucking itchy, man. It's like some kind of this dust fell on my foot, and it's just itchy as hell. Fuck, my legs come out. Eh. This thing has some Loctite. Quite strong Loctite. Not like some shit Pentax Loctite. 
but it's not like the Yashika level. Yashika levels are crazy. Heck. Red lock type. This is still openable, but it's hard. Let's put this thing in. Okay. Then now let's pull this there part. Well, I did not find any optical diagrams on this guy on the internet, yeah? And also did not find any like that on guides. So I'm gonna do this thing like without any prior knowledge on what the heck's inside here. Now I'm gonna just unscrew this guy. While unscrewing, there you go, that's the entry point, yeah? You wanna mark the entry point. So for marking the entry point, you wanna mark it on the top only. There. This guy. Wait, why, why is it not entering again? There you go. Right there. Okay. This must be marked with an X. X over here. And an X over here. Entries X, lines are, are alignment, basically, for me. So, this is the optical bit out. Now you have this group which is gonna be open first you have to mark the entry also with this guy so this thing goes in like I think this is still a single thread man but let's see this where's the X on this guy X over here. Yeah. There we go. And this can have an X. Mark the X over here. Okay. Now we have these things. I'm gonna go clean these things after this, yeah. That came from the side of this room, okay? And then that means that this has to go here. And then you wanna try removing the real element. Let's see. I think you have to use these things because they seem like they have flat bits. So you can like push this tool in and then it should grip properly. At least that's what I hope, yeah. It's gonna happen. Things usually don't go to plan. So See, oh, 3, 2, 1, and... Oh, fuck. That was a bit too hard for me. How oh, the... And now the thing is close to getting the aperture. Fuck this lens, man. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna have to clean the focusing rings and stuff like that. I'm also gonna clean these disgusting things. Then later I'm gonna come back and show you what I've learned essentially because this is disgusting. You see my hands here. So yeah, thank you and I'm gonna come back soon. Bye bye. Fuck's not. Okay, hello. It's a bit later in the day. Now it's a bit overcast. And I'm... Okay, so I have opened up the rear group which is from this guy. I think I've opened the aperture out on camera if I'm not sure but if you haven't seen that part then you can just watch how I put this thing back together and you should know yeah so the rear group is really stiff hard to open because this thing the threads are not very clean and you also can see like this yellow stuff which I think is rust but also might be some red loctite like the Yashikas like the Yashika TSP I'm filming on right now yeah so this guy it was crazy hard to take apart and I ended up saying like this so um this cost me not very much I'm gonna sell this thing for quite cheap because this is a 35mm f3.5 so what I did was so that this thing did not eat most of my time and it basically make me lose money because my time is worth something so what I did was I just cut a 17mm hex more like a straight cut yeah like on bike axles on the Free coaster that I did, I mean a uh, coaster brick bike hex that I did quite a few months ago 
it had like this boot so what I did was I took a tremor with a diamond bit and I cut the two sides and then now you can fit this wrench 17 size onto this thing right here so then that's how you can put this thing back together again so now I'm gonna go assemble these bits and then we should be ready so I'm gonna go clean the optics and then drop them in one by one first this guy seem very clean. Okay. And so the rear group has some scratches here. But I'm okay with that because that's how it is. It's not gonna get any better than that, yeah, so drop it in. Fuck the optic. Chop ish. Fuck you, man. It's not going down. At least not as easy as it should be, yeah. So let's try pushing it something else that's a bit more soft. I'm sure you fit in this guy again. So, put in this thing. Okay, it's gone in. Now for this guy. The second one, the both of the sides are concave, but then the way you find which one is the inside one is the larger optic is gonna go inside the group and the smaller one's gonna be exposed. This, yeah, and just get this guy to drop down into the cell or like the optical block, and then you want to have this ring and blow into this guy. There you go, then just screw this thing on, and you should be done. This thing was also quite tight. I use some vernier calipers, I mean, some which all those things, vice grips, and a 17 mil wrench. I mean, I'm not sure what this thing is yet. I think it's male, but I'm not sure. So, I've never measured one of those, like, hex thingies. So, let's just tighten this guy down, hand tight. And then they should be quite clean. Yeah, it's a lot of scratches, but it's okay. Nothing disgusting, like funky and stuff. So, let's go ahead and push this optical group back in. And I think you should tighten it to factory spec, but I'm not sure. So, yeah, I might as well tighten it to factory spec. So, this still took a lot of effort even with this wrench, which is why I'm going to tighten it quite a lot. I think it might not be okay to like not tighten it that much. Now this, if you try to open this ring with this, it's impossible. I'm gonna tell you that before you try it, yeah, because it's impossible. Then let's push this thing away. You have this, you can sit this thing on the, on the table, yeah? Then what else can you do right now? Now you wanna push this guy in. And then screw this guy in. Uh, maybe. Not sure. But I think that's what you have to do. So you have to screw this guy in. And then it's just gonna sit over there. Where's the line? Line goes over there. Now let's push. Okay, seems reasonable. Now let's screw this guy back in. 
not sure if this is the right way, but yeah, I think that is the right way. Oh fuck. So it's quite hard to do this, because you have to like screw it from underneath, but then you also have to screw it while the thing is not like wobbling around, which is fucking near impossible. Man. Let's see, is that perfect? It might be, not sure. Yeah, that's quite hard. So let's lift this thing to eye level and then let's just screw this guy in. The first screw should be in. Go nice. Um, where were these things? I think they're like on the most uh, right side. So just screw it down. Two left to go, yeah. So you have this guy. Shit. And you have this guy. Okay, quite tight. Now let's put the aperture bits back on. The long one, I mean like the the pin on the edge is gonna be the one facing the top. This thing has five plates, like the Ashika Electro 35 series, yeah? Five plates. And that usually means it's quite a cheap lens. And this I think is quite a cheap lens because it's 35mm at 3.5. More expensive models are usually 35mm at 2.8. This is your last play, I suppose. If not your second to last. Let's see. This goes in. This is number one, three, four, four. Five is over here. Five has to somehow go under that blade, which is what the fuck, man. This guy by a bit, and you have a working assembly. Okay, nice. Then you have to put this guy back in. Mm, if you push this this way, it's gonna close. So you gotta open it. When you open it, you wanna this open yeah. So you wanna make this thing like max out to this side. So let's align these screws with this hole. I currently cannot see the holes, which must mean I'm doing it wrong. So, try to find the grooves. Make them all fit in. Okay. Now I'm gonna find my little aperture holder thingy. Actually, no. Let's put the like tensioner ring thingy on first. So let's find the line, put this thing on the line, then find the screw holes, nice. Then I'm gonna go put these things back in. This is to hold the aperture assembly so it doesn't jump out, yeah? That's like the only job this thing has. So it's not very important actually, but... Because if you have the side thingy, I believe the side, the side guide rail thingy will hold the aperture assembly in without this thing. But I'm not very sure about that, yeah? so don't take my word on it. So then you push this guy, close this, and you have to like push the blades down before you can open it up. There you go, nice. So then you can like put this guy back on. Okay, then you wanna shit. 
then you wanna screw. It's gonna rain soon, man. So I hope that it doesn't rain that fast. Cause if I rain that, I mean, if it rains fast, yeah, like soon, this thing's gonna be wet when you put it together. And when you put lenses together, when it's wet or humid, it tends to grow fungi quite quickly. So I mean, I do have a dry box, yeah, but I'm not in the mood of like cleaning a lens twice. It's like the heat of summer, man. This morning I was like sweaty as hell. Now it's raining. What the fuck? Shit. Okay. And the aperture didn't work because the pin right here yeah was pen this like pin under the golden pin right here so what i'm gonna have to do when i reassemble this thing is i'm gonna have to align it perfectly and make sure it doesn't like pen and also that it hooks together like so now i have these pieces what else do i need i need i need to assemble the helicoid of the lens and then i put the lens in the helicoid inside Cause if no, I cannot put the these things in these like guide rails. So yeah, let's try putting this thing together first. This is gonna go on to this. There we go. This will have to go on first, I think. I believe yeah. So let's see. This thing. I think you will want some glue. Yeah. Let's take some rubber cement for the plastic. Sounds metal though, yeah, but I think it's plastic. Ring. So, this. Oh shit, why is it like going on? Okay. We're gonna like, put some over here on the edge. Okay, that should be enough. It's like less than the original, yeah, but I think that should be sufficient for like holding this small cap piece of shit, yeah, on here. And then, let's put this guy back on here. Why the heck did I open two sides? Hell on. Okay, now let's air dry this thing first while I find my crease. Okay. I actually bought my XM one thousand WH three headphones from Sony for the specific task of like not getting me bored while CLA lenses but I'm not using them <laughs> um, this is a bit too complex I think for me if I'm doing a Takoma 55 1.8 51.4 uh, Helios 44 Jupiter 8 Jupiter 9 I think I'm gonna be using that but for this thing no 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 this is a bit new for me so I'm gonna have to take care this seems not perfect, but it has zero fungus, it's like some scratches and stuff like that, and etching. So, aperture unit works like it should, which is not very well. Um, now you can put the app helicoid thing, helicoid unit in. So, first you need grease to put helicoid in, yeah. This thing. Okay, what bit is on the screwdriver? This, this is a PH0, see, okay. Um, let's first put some crease onto the lower helicoid, see. So, lower helicoid, put the thing into the lower helicoid, I mean the middle helicoid onto the lower helicoid, then you can put the whole thing back in. That's my plan. So, first I'm gonna do this. This is what I call the dampening ring. So, 
the string, whatever you do to it, it's gonna add to like the dampening feeling, the height, the width of the lens, like the focusing. So if you put more in here, you can get heavier focusing, but also a bit more dampening. And if you put less, it might scratch, like have some weird noises, yeah? But it also might like have nothing happen. So depends on the lens itself and also depends on your luck essentially and how you put the crease on. In my case, I don't like to put that much on here because I'm using NLGI 2 crease and NLGI 2 crease is a bit too thick actually for like this stuff but it's okay if you put just a little bit of it. If you put way too much then that is your fault. And well, it means half half your fault and half half the lens's fault yeah because these light threads are not used for I mean they're not supposed to have like NLGI 2 crease. I think they have like NLGI 1 or NLGI 0. NLGI 1 I think. NLGI 0 is like like crease when you put it with oil. It leaks everywhere over time. NLGI 0 is I think what the Russians use, which is butter essentially, but that's what they use. So this is gonna have to find the which one's thing? X, you're gonna find the X for this guy. Where the heck did I put the X? Put an X over here, but I'm not finding an X over here. Um, let's try clean this thing up a bit with alcohol, yeah, because it pretty obviously is quite dirty, and this is not gonna help me at all. So let's see if I can see the X that I put. Well, it should be visible, but I'm just not seeing it. Now, see, X. Okay, so, yeah, the ring itself is quite dirty from crease. But okay, so, X marks a spot. X goes on the other X. And this should just go in, see? Nice. It's not very heavy, quite light, which is okay, I like that. And oh, wait, wait, it's actually quite heavy, but just let it be. You can actually wipe it again and have it like a bit lighter, but I think this is your max basically for this crease. Yeah, you can just maybe do this, like wipe it along once. It also have the crease spread by itself, I mean by your, by means of a tissue, yeah. But I think this is like near max, so. You don't want to wipe it that hard because if you wipe it that hard then you're just gonna basically remove all the crease and then have a scratchy as hell lens let's see how this goes so x goes on to the other x where's the other x x there we go x so where's the x again here we are okay so this You can hear the bit, yeah. Yeah, that's a bit too little crease. So let's add a little bit more crease and we should be okay. My fault of like putting too little bit of crease. So let's see. Let's add some here. Here. Here, 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 and here. Nice. Then you wanna screw this guy in. I think this thing is single threaded, so you shouldn't really worry that much. Where's the X? Yeah, single threaded, so screw it down. Once you screw this guy down, you wanna go in wipe this thing.
Okay. Now you need some tissue to wipe on this grease. You can actually put quite a lot, yeah, but I like the tissue to also spread the grease around. And do the same with this. Okay, now we shall wipe this stuff. And see that after the wipe, it deposits the crease quite evenly. So that's a good thing. Now you want to push this thing in from the top, yeah? This thing might be multi-threaded, so you can like find your X on the lens. Where the heck do you have put the X? I think that's the X, yeah. So the X goes with the X on the middle barrel like this. So here we are. Where's the X? There we go. And it should just drop in. Let's see. No? No, it's going in. Should go in now, see? Nice. So once you're up to here, you can wait wait you wanna align these things yeah oh i think this is upside down man what the hell okay okay let's take this thing out and align the x of this guy with the x of this guy where's this guy's x That looks like an X. So put this guy onto here and screw. There we go. And now you want to align these things. So align this with. Let's screw this guy fully down and screw this guy out a bit until you get these two to align. Just like that. Then you want to align this guy, which is probably easier said than done, but what the fuck? Why is it that far? Hmm. Yeah, this is quite shit. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I didn't put it right. Okay, so I think. Why well, did well, I did it wrong? So let's put this thing back here. Let's unscrew this guy. And find where the X is and see where I should be putting the X. It should be over here, so just like Screw it down like this maybe. I think that might be it. That's a bit too far back I'd say. Let's see ya. Uh, line these two then find where the upper lines align. Okay, that's perfect. See, see, see? All these lines, and this is how I remember it to be. So now what I want to do is I want to fit the guide rails back on. So, take, well, how many minutes do I have left? Three minutes. Let me cut the video for a while and come back, yeah? Okay, I'm back with not recording, yeah? So, this goes in here. Let me help this guy to go in. 
Gotta go screw you up. Fucking coin there, man. What the hell? One. What is this shit? Ah. One screw. One screw you in. Why is this thing stuck like, like this, man? Let's make sure this will go in. Maybe? No? The screwdrivers will do fat. Let's try, let's like try a uh, thinner one. My Mavic Mini screwdriver might work. Okay, nice. Screw number two. And this does work. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Whoa. Mm, okay. And you have a working helicopter. It's quite heavy, man. What the fuck? But at least it works, so yeah. <laughs> uh, let's align all these lines. There we go. Um, yeah, it's a bit too heavy, I'd say. But okay, lah. Fair nothing. Also, let's put some grease into the helicopter. Yeah. I mean, like the rails. Because if you don't grease the rails, you might actually end up with worn up rails and worn rails are not that not that nice to focus on they're like scratchy as hell and they can like bite also so i'm gonna go crease the rail the first rail after i finish this rail i didn't want to crease that rail immediately because i mean the reason why i didn't want to crease that thing immediately was because if you put crease on the rail like see now yeah it fell down if you put crease on this thing right now, it's gonna like slop everywhere. And if you have one already on, it actually holds the ring in place. And what that does is like it lessens the the likelihood where you have like a real jump out. It still can happen, but it's not that easy to happen. And even if it happens, you can probably control it and not like lose position of the helicoid. So that is why. I'll take this last screw. So these screws are not countersunk, but those are countersunk, which is quite cool, I'd say. For some reason, they made it like that. So, okay. Oh, but I think this is smooth enough on its own, yeah. So, just gonna let it be. Uh, let's line all these things first. Where are the line marks? Okay. I like to put two, yeah, because if I put only one, I might mistake it for some other scratch. If I put two, it's like guaranteed to be over there. So yeah. Um then let us put it away. This then is gonna go into the back part, I think, yeah. So first you wanna line the lower cup and the upper cup. These things will like grasp onto the pin over here on the aperture, yeah. So then Make sure this guy's the F3.5, not 16. Okay. Then you're gonna push this guy in. 3.5. Dropping in. One. Go in. Piece of shit. One. Fuck. Oh, I think the the baffle thing you can go later, but I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Can we actually go in or not? But can we, yeah, let's just peel the baffle off and glue this thing down later, yeah, because it's not easy to like have that thing also be in here while I'm trying to fit this thing. So, try to do this and then push you in. Come on, go in, go in, go in. Yes, nice. Now, if you stop down and you press, the aperture will stop down. See, it works. So now I can like screw this. Yeah, it's raining, man. Fuck. So I can get this screw. Quite long screws, these things, yeah. So you can like put this thing on the screwdriver and hope for the best. Screw it in. Okay. Once one screw is in, everything else is gonna be easy. Problem is I cannot set infinity with rain because my object that I set infinity on yeah, is like a bridge half a kilometer away and actually it's more than that, yeah, it's like 2.5 km away I think. But yeah, it's quite blurry when it rains because 
There's like this fog and like the water drop and stuff like that. So yeah. I do not like rain when I'm fixing lenses. I do like rain when I'm like playing my RC car and stuff like that, but not when I'm fixing lenses. Like rock and fun is different and they're not supposed to be mixed. So with this I wanna put some more glue. Yeah, I'm, I'm wrong for that part, so you're supposed to glue it after the fact. Put some glue over here this time. Okay. Let's guy try for a while. While that thing tries, I can like put the front element in, I think, after this. So I can like close the crease. Okay, put away and then let us glue this guy back on. After this, so wait, for this first of all optic, you wanna clean it up because there's some dirt in here. Yeah? For this guy, let's see, let's push the stuff all away. You need these calipers or whatever the heck you call them, and this guy. The rear element on this thing is bulbous, so you do not want to set this thing on the floor or on the table. Yeah. This, this, one, good, nice. Then you want to tighten this thing down. And there you should get the front element open. Let's widen this thing by a bit. Nice. Take yet another tissue for cleaning. This is for the lenses. Shit. One, chop. Nice. Hmm. This is clamped in, so you cannot clean this from the outside, you have to clean it from the inside. This guy will take some alcohol, I think. So, actually, no, let's use some lighter fluid, yeah, because alcohol is a bit more destructive than lighter fluid. Let's take my Zippo. People say Zippo is the best brand. I tend to have different preferences to other people, or maybe it's because me being in Indonesia, stuff just isn't as good as stuff out in other countries, so that's probably why. But let's just see. So, Zippo, for me at least, is the best one. I haven't tried any other like lighter food brands. Let's cut this thing first. Um, let's see. Scissors. Okay. So if anyone has a lighter fluid company and you want to sponsor my channel, go free. Feel free to do that, yeah? Chat on the bottom or like IG me or something because this is quite expensive man if you have like a cheap alternative for people that want to see your cameras why not let's then take some of this An ad spot on my channel is a bottle per video, so <laughs> if you want me to like talk good stuff about your lighter fluid, then just send me a bottle and I'll try it. Nothing too hard about that. This is for lighter fluid, so I cannot use this thing for the final rinse, yeah? More like final wipe. No, it's not what you can.
pre clean up. Let's blow it. Okay. Now to the front element. The under part only, yeah. The top, I mean the upper part should be perfect without me needing to interfere. Because yeah? you can like wipe it outside. You don't have to do it now. Okay, this is the lower part. I'm gonna do the upper part because the upper part also has some like excess flyer fluid on it. Okay, seems quite clean. You can now chop this guy back in. Okay, and then you can screw this guy back in. Okay. okay, now let's put this thing back on, it's baffle, yeah? Okay, that's nice. Now what you wanna do is you wanna put this optic back to me. Like this. Um, the upper part will be the white pin. So, this. upper screw over here is supposed to be for the lens okay I'm not that sure so where did this thing come from then? Uh, I don't know man so <laughs> let's just go with it and see I think this thing was supposed to be black. So I think this is where it should go. It's raining a bit harder, man. Like, at least now the lens is sealed, yeah, so I have less of a worry about humidity going in. And yeah. Seems quite okay, aside from the obvious scratches in the front, yeah. Now I think what I wanna do is I wanna go and adjust the infinity focus outside while I still can, yeah. And then I can come back and grease the rear, rear like aperture ring. And then we should be okay. So yeah, for now I think I should remove this aperture ring because this thing has like this pin right there. Yeah, and having the pin will not allow me to basically service it. So wait. It only moves quite a bit. Yeah, so it doesn't like fully stop down. I think, but. I think that should be okay, I'm not sure. Oh shit, I scratched the front, I think. No, I didn't, but. The front is so bulbous, man, that it like always gets scratched. Um, 
For now, I want to remove the back, yeah. To remove the back, you want to put the front piece first, because if not, you might scratch it again. Let's find the top. Okay. Where's my screwdriver? Two of these screws should be enough, yeah? You don't need all of them, because you only need to like open the back. And after you open the back, you can put this guy on a normal M42 adapter. So first, for this thing, let's just put all of them, uh, so it doesn't like get lost this one screw. Okay, then for this rear bit, you wanna use this vernier caliper to like open the string. After we open this ring, you can like open up this screw, which is gonna be a slot 2.0 size on the side. This guy, I think it has two of them, but I'm not sure. I think it's only one or two. Um, it's only one, I think. It's quite long, this screw, yeah. So pull it out and pull this guy out. There's a ball bearing, so beware of that. It's right over there, yeah. So pull this guy out. That's the ball bearing out. Now this will be okay to mount on a normal M42 adapter. So I'm gonna cut the video after this. I'm gonna soon come back after I finish adjusting Infinity. Uh, let's find my M42 adapter first. Eh. Okay, so because I have this EF adapter on my Nikon Z6, I can just use this, which is an EF ring to M42, and this should just go on to the Z6. Mm, let's see, this goes on to here, I, still, I believe, yeah. It's so hard to, for me to grab the focus ring, but yeah, wait. Let's tighten this thing down and. Yeah, it does work. Okay, let's take you guys out, yeah? So this is my workbench, basically. See? Okay. I'm not sure if you can see. It's so hard to focus, man, because my finger is supposed to grab this, like, slippery as hell ring. So, now... Training, yes, I'm gonna go cut the video first. Okay, so after taking the Z6 out, oh, I just forgot. I mean, just remembered that the Z6 cannot like crop in while video, I while shooting video. So in the end, I just thought like, fuck it, I'm just gonna cut the video. So you didn't see like me adjusting the focus, yeah. If I had like a Sony, I would have shown you, but yeah, I'm using a Nikon. So that is something I do not like from the Z6. On my A6400, I used to be able to do that. So I like press the FN like on the right top right here yeah for zooming in so now what you want to do is you want to just basically open this front ring up after this front ring is out you can like adjust the focus Oh, I chopped the screw. Let's go find the screw. Come on. Eh. Shit. I found it. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Aye. Usually, screws, if you lose them, yeah, you're gonna lose them for quite a long time. Ah, lucky. Lucky me. Now, this is gonna be a top. So. Slide this thing over the top. Okay. 
hit up infinity and then you want to screw this thing in screwdriver okay and let us go so Okay, now it works, nice, and it's not that heavy actually, it's only heavy when you have like a slippery ring because it's impossible to turn if you have, you, you're using that, yeah. Then, now you have this which you have to clean up, and I'm gonna put the front up first here yeah, because this thing is supposed to be done, so, yeah. This is quite dirty, I might wanna wash this thing first, yeah, so I think I'm gonna cut the video without showing you how you put this thing back, yeah, because why would you need that because it's quite easy actually yeah? just put the ball in slide the ring on and then after you have that done just screw the one screw in and you should be good to go and put the ring back on so yeah i'm gonna gonna put the front bit back in i'm gonna say goodbye because this ring is a bit too disgusting for me okay front ring Filter back on. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Hope you liked the video. I'm gonna continue on cleaning the rear bit because I need to wash this thing with soap yeah, and water so it looks clean. And yeah, goodbye. Thank you for watching. See you in another video.